Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ to everyone out there on Facebook, uh, to my wonderful extended church family that is out there. God bless you. I hope you're doing well. I've been praying for everyone that comes to mind and asking God to cover those that don't come to my mind. But I'm just praying for everyone, praying for my family. Uh, my name is Stephen Arden. I'm a minister here at Open Door. And um, come to you tonight uh, to give you an encouragement, to give you some hope. Pastor asked us to come with some words of encouragement because we need them in these times. So hopefully what I have for tonight will help encourage you, keep you going, give you some strength to go on. And I thank Pastor tonight for allowing us to do this. Uh, it's amazing that we have such wonderful men of God, that we can do this, that we can get up here, that we can put some encouragement out there, some hope for people, uh, extend our love and God's love to those that are out there on Facebook watching. Greetings. Uh, so tonight, I want to talk to you, of course, about God and how he never leaves us, how he's always there. And I want to start in Deuteronomy chapter 31 in verse 6. And it says, Be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he is that doeth good with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. So this scripture comes from uh, Deuteronomy where Moses is speaking. And he has called the children of Israel together. And he is speaking to them, telling them to be strong and good courage, to fear not. And telling them that God is going to be with thee, that he's not going to fail thee, forsake thee. And the reason why he's telling the children of Israel this is because he's no longer going to be with them. Uh, this is at the end of Moses' life. Uh, the children of Israel are getting ready to cross over the river Jordan into the promised land. And of course, Moses does not get to go with them. So what Moses did is he wrote down some words. Uh, gave them a big, long speech, basically. Um, wrote down these words, had the priest read them in the, the temples and the tabernacles. And he called the children of Israel together and gave them these last few words, telling them to be strong, to be of good courage, and to fear not that God's going to be with them, that he's not going to fail them, he's not going to forsake them, he's not going to leave them. And giving them some words of strength and words of encouragement, because he was no longer going to be there. And the, words, and the words that he wrote down in Deuteronomy, um, in his law, he actually asked the priest to read them every seven years in the temple. To basically every seven years to come to, before them and read these words again. Uh, they were words of warning, of encouragement, of strength. And he wanted them to repeat them every seven years. So that way they could hear them and they could grow from them and they can get strength from them when they need it the most. So Moses was not going with them. He had been with them for a long time. Uh, he had been through the wilderness with them for 40 years, and they were getting ready to come out of the wilderness into the promised land. And they had learned to rely upon Moses and to look to him for leadership and for strength. And he was no longer going to be there with them. So he wanted to give them some words, some encouragement, some strength to keep them going as they're going into the promised land, into this new era of leadership without him. Uh, Joshua was going to take over his leadership. And Moses basically repeated the same words to Joshua to tell him that God's going to be with him, that he's not going to leave him, not going to forsake him. And we can gain strength from this. We can gain courage, some faith, some hope from these words that Moses spake. In these times that we're in, it may feel different. It may, may feel strange. It's not what we're used to. But yet, we can read these words and know that even though it's a different time, even though we're not together like we usually are, we still have God there with us. He has not left you. He has not forsaken you. He's not going to leave you. He is always going to be there with you. God is never going to leave. He's always going to be there when you need him the most. Even in the times of great need, there are times in our lives when we're in need. And at this moment, we're in need of lots of strength, lots of hope, 
uh, lots of encouragement. And God's there to do that. He's there through his ministers speaking to you like we are tonight. He's also through these online church services that we're having, which is encouraging me. I tune into every single one I can because it gives me hope. It gives me strength. Since I can't be here in the sanctuary with my church family, I can be there in spirit with God and have him to encourage me and lift me up. Even in the times when we feel the most alone, he's right there. In these times where I've got my family with me at home, and there's some people that may be alone at home, that they can't get out very often. Or they have health issues and they're keeping themselves away from people for obvious reasons. They may feel more alone than usual. But I'm here to tell you tonight that God is there with you. He has not left you. He will not leave you alone. He is there to encourage you, to lift you up, to strengthen you. All you have to do is get into his word. Even in the times when we turn our backs on him, there's people all over the world that are blaming God or turning their backs on God and saying, how can God do this? But even in those times when we turn from him or even in those seasons that we're maybe disobedient or we're not looking to God or we're not following after him, God's still there. Even in those moments, he's there to help us, to keep us, to encourage us, to strengthen us. He's there. All we have to do is turn towards him. And he's right there. Even in those times that seem bleak and dark, he is right there. Even in those times when we're hurt, we're in pain, when we've got issues, when we've got problems, he's right there. Right there to lift us up, to encourage us to give us strength, to continue on, to help us in those times of need. And he's not there to condemn or to punish or to put you down or to any of that. He's there to love, to strengthen, to keep us going. And he is there to protect us when we need it the most. In Isaiah chapter 54, in verses 16 and 17, it says, Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire, and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. And I have created the waster to destroy. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. As pastors told us before, God is not surprised by what's going on in our world today. God is not surprised by this virus. He's not surprised by all the things that are happening, how contagious it is, um, all the things that we've had to do, our economy shutting down, uh, grocery stores becoming bare. He's not surprised by any of this. God knows what's going to happen. God knows the future before we know it. And he knows all of this was going to happen. And so God has made a way. He has given us these online services, these times where we can come together through social media and get more encouragement and strength. God is never surprised by anything that happens. God is the creator of everything. So that tells me he created viruses. He created these things. He knows how they work. He knows how they spread. He knows all of this. But he also told us that no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. This is not going to prosper. There is going to be an end to it. This thing that's happening in our world, it's not going to continue forever. It is going to have an end. And there is going to come a time where we're going to be able to come together again and celebrate in his house and lift him up and glorify together and get that strength and encouragement. There's going to come a time when we can do that. But as for now, the season that we're currently in, this time that we're in now, where we're spread out, where we're all alone sometimes, God is there with us. And in these times, God is expecting us not to just stand still. God wants us to grow during these times. God wants us to do things during this time to get closer to him. This is, can be a time when you're in your home spending in devotion. Like God, like Pastor said, create a church in your house. Spend that time in his word. 
Gather together with your family. Pray. Worship him. Create that church in your home. And it can go further than that. You can reach out to your neighbors. Make sure that they're doing okay. Reach out to your family. Uh, even to your church family. Reach out to these people that may also be going through the same thing you're going through. Continue in what God wants you to do. Just because we're in this season where we have to quarantine ourselves and we have to watch what's going on because of this contagious disease, we can still reach out a text message to people. You can text or on social media or however you want to. You can even send people videos of you saying, hi, how are you doing? You can um, video chat. All these things, all this technology that God has put into this world, we can use at a moment like this. To reach out to those that are in need. We can reach out to those in our community. Those around us. Those people that we know may be in trouble. Reach out to them. Use this time and let God use you to bless others. Because God, like I said, was not surprised by this. So God has his people ready and able to do what he needs them to do in this time. People are looking for hope. They're looking for encouragement. They're looking for strength in this time. And we as God's people, we have that. We have God's hope. We've got that encouragement. We've got that strength. And we need to share it with other people. And the reason why we have that strength and that encouragement when others may fail, where others may be lacking in hope, the reason we have that is because of the words that Jesus said when he was getting ready to depart. Jesus, just like Moses, was getting ready to depart the world. And uh, he was going to leave his disciples. And he knew it was coming up. So he started giving them words of encouragement. Started getting them prepared. Getting them ready for that time that he would not be with them. And in John chapter 14, verses 18 through 20, he says, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. At that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. Jesus gave these words to the disciples, letting them know that even though there's going to come a time when you can't see me in this world, I'm still going to be with you. I'm not going to leave you comfortless. He told the disciples, I'm going to send you a comforter. And we know, as God's people, we know that that comforter is the Holy Ghost that God sent to us. His Holy Spirit that lives inside of us, that dwells inside of us. It gives us strength. It gives us encouragement. It gives us hope in those times when it seems impossible. It gives us that strength to hold on, to keep going, to reach out to people, to lift others up. In those times when it seems darkest, in those times when it seems like we're all alone, we, as God people, we know that's not true because God is right there with us. God is beside of us. And when we reach out, when we do things, God will be there with you. If you reach out to those in your community and ask them, is there anything you need? Can I do anything for you? He will be there with you. He will help you because we have his strength. We have that on the inside of us. And that, and that gives us the greatest hope in this time when we need it the most. And if you're watching this and you're like, how do I get that? How do I actually get that? Well, it's in here. It's in his word. Just like Moses left the law that was to be read in the tabernacle every seven years, that God wrote it down in his book. In the Bible, he wrote down what we're supposed to do. And if you need to know, I encourage you to get onto the YouTube channel for The Open Door. Because Pastor just did a series about what it means to be born again. And he laid it all out. He laid it out what it is to be born again. How do we get that Holy Spirit inside of us? How do we get God to dwell in us? How do we get to that point where we're never alone? No matter who's around us, no matter what's happening, we're never alone because God is there with us. He has it all laid out in that series. Go to the YouTube channel for The Open Door and look up what it means to be born again. And Pastor will tell you, it's all there. 
But if we go to Acts chapter 2 and verse 38 is where it started. Peter stood up and said, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's the beginning. That's the step. That's the plan. And like I said, if you watch that video series on what Pastor said of how to be born again, it lays it all out. Shows you exactly what happened in the book, in the Bible, of what happened. And that's how you get that comforter. That's how you get that hope, that strength. It's all right there, waiting and available. And I encourage you to just go into this word, dive into it. And even those that already have the Holy Ghost, even those that have been born again, dive into this word. God left us this word for encouragement, for strength, for hope. Find those verses that speak to you in this word and read them over and over again. Gain that encouragement, gain that strength. Now I want to thank you for tuning in tonight for listening to me talk for a little bit about hope and encouragement. I thank you. And I hope that what I've said will encourage you and strengthen you and keep you in this time when you need it the most. And at this moment, I'm going to pray and I'm going to ask God to help each and every one that is watching this right now to give you some encouragement, to lead you in his word to where you need to be, to give you the scripture that will lift your heart, that will keep you, that will help you in this time. Lord Jesus, God, I come right now asking you to touch each and every person that is watching this video at this moment, God. You know who, God, is watching this. You know, God, the ones that need you the most, that need that encouragement, that need that strength, God. And I ask you, Lord, to let them, God, reach out, reach into your word, God, to find you, God, to find the verses, God, that speak to them that speak encouragement, that speak wisdom, that speak love, that speak mercy, God. Let them find it in your word that you left us, God. And let us repeat it over and over again, God, to gain that encouragement, to gain that strength. And I ask you, Lord Jesus, to put your protection around, God, these people, to help them, God, to strengthen them, to keep them safe in this time, God. Keep them, God, encouraged. Keep them going from day to day, God. And help them, God, in this time to reach out to you more, God. And reach out to their family, God, their friends. To encourage their community, God. To lift people up when they need it the most. And I give you all the glory and all the praise in Jesus' name. Hey, this is Pastor Chris and Vonda Sowards. We just wanted to say thanks for watching today. If you liked watching our services, I know you'll love coming and worshiping with us here in Charleston. To find out more information, please head to our website at theopendoor.church.